Hey, it's MK, and today I am joining Monique Lowe in her 700 subscriber um, hop, as well as her birthday celebration. I am also playing along with May I Scrap Lift You, and this is the layout that I will be lifting <clears throat> from Monique's Instagram page. So I brought in these thickers that are called the details. They're um, a Heidi, no, I apologize. They're a Vicki Booten collection. And I thought that I was going to use the details if I don't use a third photo. So we will find out if I do or not. I also brought in these acetate leaves by 49 and Market. I brought in a couple gears from Some Assemblage Required. Now this is an, um, a digital cut that is available on the shop. And then these are the three photos that I will be um, scrap lifting today. And it's just a plaque explaining about the railroad um, that we... Um, saw in Palisades. So I also have 13 arts um, from the Discovery collection and I have these two papers that I would like to use and this is the B-sides of them or the other side. I don't know which one is B-side and A-side you guys. I have a plain white paper because I'm going to do the packaging technique on this and I picked out fossilized amber for the packaging technique. Now I did um, put it on a different um, what do you call it, uh, a sample page before, because I know that the oxide inks, when you add water to them, they react a little bit different than if you just use them straight out of the bottle. So I definitely wanted to check it out to see what I was dealing with first, um, because I, I have a hard time trying to find the right yellow. Um, I tried my Altenu yellows, I tried my Dilutions yellows, and they're a little bit too summery. I was looking for more of a, a sunflower yellow. So this one was perfect once I added um, water to it, but I had to add the water to it to get this color. If not, then it definitely turns into almost a rust color, just to let you guys know about dioxides. Okay, so now I'm just checking to make sure that my blotch is large enough for the photos. This is where I'm trying to decide, do I just want two because it's gonna take away from the blotch? Do I want all three? I feel like I want all three because the close-up of the plaque just doesn't give the feel for how the plaque was inlaid. You know, the, the time it took them to create the rock platform that the plaque sits on and, and things like that. And I don't know, I just really wanted that in my layout. Okay, um, I also went around three times with my sewing machine. I have to say I cheated. I took a very light pencil mark for my very first go around. And then after that, I didn't care how wonky the little circles were, but I just used my cutting tool from Creative Memories to make that very first circle um, for there. And then of course I used brown um, stitching because of the brown in my leaves from 49 and Market. I kind of didn't, I, I still don't have white. <laughs> I'm lazy, I haven't gone to the store to buy white thread yet, you guys. Um, but I don't think I need it. <laughs> Anyways, um, I'm trying to decide. So Monique has a photo mat behind her photos and then she has an offset mat behind her photo. And I am just trying to figure out how I want mine set. Now I did not cut mine to size because she only has two sides of hers showing. And so I thought that um, I don't needed, I didn't need it to be the full size because that would have taken up more space had I have done that. So I just decided to cut it a little bit shy and then put it all at an angle. And because she did it on her one photo, I was debating whether or not I should do it on all three of mine. And then I'd made the decision, yeah, I'm going to, just because it adds a little bit more color to the layout. Yep, so um, that's what I decided to do. Yes. So we are still at the Palisades. Um, this is the, the railroad tracks. I've already scrapbooked a, a photo-ish like this um, of the railroad, but the plaque actually talks about how important the railroad was to the mining town of Palisades. And um, actually the railroad is even what made my little town that I live in now possible. Uh, so I have to say that if, if it wasn't for the railroad, it, you know, most of these most of these towns would not have survived. Um, the the railroad actually still works in this particular town. They still use it. They just don't stop here anymore. But this is how the town got its supplies. When you walk in, um, when you walk along this railroad that you're not supposed to because it's still active. <laughs> <laughs> but if you go down over to the right of the railroad and walk along that way, you can see where all of the houses are for this. All of the domains are in this mountain or hillside um, 
of the railroad. So they're all facing the railroad. And I thought that that was the neatest thing ever. There are little tracks of, that were abandoned. So they replaced tracks um, and moved the tracks a little bit because you can see where the, uh, what is it called, um, hub um, stopped. Um, like there was a way station there for the train. Um, like it was a pull off um, and, and a little off building ramp. Uh, what do they call those? Um, as like a train station, but in the olden days where it was just, you know, a plaque, <laughs> a platform, that's what I'm thinking of. It was a platform, uh, but it's, it's not there. So you have to kind of use your imagination, but you can see where the old tracks were, where they actually took off and got off the main railroad and then came back on. Uh, they, they kind of disassembled the portions that, that, led off the, tr the main tracks and back on, but the old tracks that were next to the platform are still there, uh, a little bit, you know, they, they've never been maintained. So all of the, all of the bits and pieces are, you know, um, I don't know what the word is called. You guys, I apologize. Words are eluding me today. Um, they, they are degraded, you know, they're, they're aged clearly. Um, but, but it's kind of cool how they left some things and, and, and removed others for the, for the station or the tri train to continue on its course. Uh, they just took out the, it's like they, it's like they took out the off ramp <laughs> for this trip, for this particular station, but it's neat walking around and, and being able to see that you have to walk quite a ways down, um, to, to go and see that if you want to get off the beaten path. But uh, by the time that you make it down to the last little hut in this row, which I wish I could have, uh, the only way that I would have been able to take a picture of all the houses in a row is um, if I was to actually stand on the active tracks, which we did not do. Um, we stood on the, on the bridge for just a half a second um, so I could take a few photos. I stood right here for half a second so I could take a few photos and that was about it. Um, I, I couldn't, I wasn't to the spot where, um, you know, I could have taken a picture of all the, all the huts because then I, I would have put, um, myself in danger, um, because right here I could have just walked off and I would have been safe if, um, you know, anybody was coming, but, um, where the, where the huts are, there's a fence and I would have been stuck in the fence if a train was coming and I can't run that fast. Yeah. I'm, I'm not a runner. I'm a reader. Um, that's what my daughter always says. Uh, but yeah, it's, um, just one of those things where you kind of weigh your safety options, which I'm glad I didn't do because by the time we got to the huts, an actual train was coming. Uh, so, and I, I got pictures of that too. Yay. He honked his horn and waved at us. The kids just got so excited. Um, but I'm glad I did not make that decision because I wouldn't have been able to outrun that train by all means. Um, so it was, it was just neat to see that, uh, the train, the trains are still active on this railroad, which is great. Um, but it's kind of cool to see where it used to be too, where it used to go and, and all that stuff. And so, uh, we took a picture of the plaque and, and, uh, what it says and all that stuff. It's, um, the Eureka and Palisade Railroad. Clearly it's not called that anymore. This is just the, um, I think it's the Pacific Railroad. I think is what it's called. Oh, don't quote me on that. I, I don't know which one this is. All right, to finish off my layout. Now, I didn't have a, well, I probably do somewhere in my library, a cutesy little floral flower thing with leaves and all that stuff like Monique has. So I chose to use gears and then I covered the gears in these beautiful acetate flowers, which I thought were awesome. Um, they went with my papers really well, even though it's two separate companies. And then um, just tucked and weaved. I added the butterflies just like she did for, you know, for cutesy little aspects. But then I decided to give it a little bit more by splattering um, my fossilized amber. And that's where you can see the difference between adding water and not adding water. It kind of made it a, left a rust look. And then I also used um, this fast becoming my favorite Dilutions Desert Sand Shimmer Spray. Uh, I need to get more. You guys, seriously, that's... I, it's sad how much I've already used, <laughs> uh, 
But anyways, that is my layout for today. I want to thank Monique for inviting everyone uh, to help her celebrate in 700 subscribers as well as her 40th birthday. That is so awesome. Congratulations. I hope her channel um, has great success in all honesty. She has great layouts, beautiful layouts. You guys go check her out. Her link will be down below as well as everyone else's links that are playing along in this hop. And I am still playing with, uh, well, today's the last day for May I Scrap Lift You. Um, and uh, yeah, I cannot wait to see what is next for June. All right. Thank you so much. And I'll check y'all later. Bye.